Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good one today. I'm the Metal Junkie, and today I've reached the fifth album by Manowar, Fighting the World, released in 1987. Uh, we got nine tracks, the same line lineup as the last few albums, and this seems to be the first polarizing album amongst fans. I'm um, seeing in the comments section people saying that this is where the band starts shifting their sound. Some people prefer the albums before this. Others love what they brought to the table with this. So we'll see where I stand in the end. Um, nine tracks. The first track is Fighting the World, the title track. Let's see what this album is about. Pretty cool uh, album cover here. Reminds me of uh, Kiss for some reason, just the way they're standing in that. Uh, very cool. Let's see what it's all about. Yeah, this does have quite a different sound than what we heard in the past by Manowar, their earlier 80s stuff. This one definitely has a more stadium feel to it, to the, the type of music they're playing, right? Still metal. <laughs> they're still doing it. Um, I really love the chorus, how it kind of repeats itself. The first time it's more straightforward, has that heavy riffs in it. And then they kind of do it again, but with this more melodic um uh, way to sing the chorus over fighting the world i really like it uh really cool it kind of reminds me like i said the the cover reminds me of kiss but the music kind of does too in uh some eras of kiss anyway and just the the cover art how they made them all like super jacked really reminds me of army of darkness third evil dead movie how they did the same thing with bruce campbell on the cover but yeah i'm enjoying this it definitely sounds a bit different though but let's keep her going expect this to be the main course but it's kind of the pre-course before we really get into it and i absolutely love that
going with the fade. Okay, that was Fighting the World by Manowar, the first track, the title track off the fifth album. And yeah, it kind of really set the, the stone for what's to come, I feel, hearing that this is much more of a stadium metal album. I'm feeling that on the first track. Kind of a nice segue going into Kings of Metal, which I've already reacted to the sixth album. So I, I definitely hear the changes in sound, how the band's kind of going through this period of evolution. Um, it doesn't sound bad at all. It's definitely a bit more simplified than before, I feel. But maybe that's just this song, too. We got eight more to check out. So I'm anxious to see what else this band brings to the table on this album. And especially with the next song called Blow Your Speakers. I could just imagine <laughs> what that one's like. I can't wait to hear it. So let's jump on in. What a song. I like the lyrical content of this one. Like calling up MTV and the radio stations because they ain't playing this type of rock and roll, you know? They don't know what's good. <laughs> like the subject matter. Um, again, this, I got a great groove to the song, especially near the chorus there. I love the drumming in this. Drumming's really standing out. Very 80s. Um, and yeah, so far, this is feeling much more stadium-like type music. With a bit of like glam metal in there, in its sound. Maybe not in their looks or their lyrical content, but it has that feel to it. That 80s hard rock glam metal, you know, where they kind of intertwine those genres. I can feel it on this just more than their last few albums anyway. But yeah, I'm not going to say I hate it because I don't. <laughs> Definitely a change in sound. A bit more simplified, but I'm digging it. We got
Go Eric, man. Still digging his vocals. His scream sounds a bit different this time around. He's not going super high. Like, he's still going high, but not as high as he can. But, I don't know, he's putting a certain emphasis on it. It sounds a bit different. I like it. A little bit more gritty at times. Um, and also, like, the chanting when they're singing together, when there's multiple voices. I don't know if that's his voice just stacked on top of each other, harmonized, or is it the whole band or whatnot. But I love the sound of that, especially in the chorus. Um, yeah, and even though this is a bit more simplified, the guitars still go off when they have to. I mean, Ross, the boss, he's he's definitely the tap master on this one. I can hear a lot of tapping going on on the last two songs, and it's freaking it's phenomenal. Very catchy tunes, very easy to listen to, so I can't complain. Up next, we got the song Carry On, so let's check that one out. The North Star guides me when winter skies are gray and I wait for the sun when all are one I shall not betray calling at me I'm waiting Carry on. 
surprised I got the lyrics this time. Well, I'm surprised about that. On a song that you probably didn't need the lyrics, it didn't go very deep, <laughs> like some of their other tracks. This one definitely felt different. Didn't really feel like a Manowar song, lyrically or uh, sound-wise, like musically. I don't know. Wasn't really digging this one, if I'm being honest. The Carry On chorus, kind of catchy. Uh, but yeah, it just didn't feel like their style. Uh, even though this could easily be sung to their telling their fans to carry on. Doesn't matter what happens to Man of War or whatnot. Uh, just keep rocking. I, I get it, but yeah, it just felt kind of off to me. Wasn't my favorite moment from the band. I'll admit that. Um... It just wasn't my style, and I didn't really think that it fit Manowar style either. It felt a little lame, if I'm being honest. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest in here. And, yeah, I don't know. It, it just didn't feel very heavy metal to me, you know. It just didn't really fit. It felt kind of out of place. But we'll see. We'll see what the rest of the album brings. The next song called Violence and Bloodshed. So... It sounds like it's going to have a different style to it than this, hopefully. Anyway, I can't see it be this lighted, this light, I should say. Um, so yeah, let's go check out track number four, Violence and Bloodshed. <laughs> sirens helicopters gunshots explosions definitely like a war type of scenario going on <laughs>
Why? No. Why? What's going on with this track? Oh my god, I was just about to say, easily my favorite of the, the album so far. It definitely feels like Man of War 2, Violence and Bloodshed. I like the verse that with the bass, dukka, 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 riding that rhythm. And then the second time it came in, we got some heavier guitars with it. Um, great chorus. I mean, you really got Eric Adams screaming his lungs out. I love it. This was the one. And then we go into this extended solo section, which kind of felt like it was a bit out of place. I didn't really know what to do with it. Like, I don't know. And then the song just kind of fades out. It doesn't even come back with the chorus again or, oh my God, this is one of those ones that had so much potential to be amazing and it's still great, but what happened? I don't know. I want it more. <laughs> Damn. Oh my God. And Eric Adams, man. This is where he shines in, in vocally anyway. Like, the screams were amazing on this one. But yeah, I'm just so disappointed in the way it kind of ended. It's too bad. Um, oh well. Up next, 